right, welcome to the Autonomous Collective. After, after, what are we calling this? After hours, after party? After hours. After hours show. Thank you very much. Um, if you get the link in our newsletter, you will uh, find the uh, Zoom link and you can join us for a, a whole bunch of amazing stuff like the Twilight Zone, which is on later tonight. And um, I guess that's it, right? No, we got Star Trek and we have a whole bunch of presentations. So it's rather nice. Uh, Lane, uh, can you introduce our guests, please? I'm really failing at this tonight. So, Lane, who's this Lane chap? Oh, yes, I used his uh, login. Uh, yes, I'm not, at all, I'm not at all King Charles. Um, I'm, in, I'm to introduce someone, am I, uh, Walter? Yes, if you wouldn't mind there, uh, King Charles, right. King Chuck. Their names, please, that would be helpful. Oh. I, I go through this often with opening shops, cinemas, pubs. I open a lot of things and they tend to tell me the name in advance of the people I'm meant to be addressing. It's sort of uh, the protocol. I don't think it's a royal protocol. It's, 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 just, it's a protocol. Let's, uh, let's go with Martha Previtt. You know, Martha I might as well Previtt. have done this myself, but go ahead. Martha Previtt, okay, lovely. And the other chap? Uh, Jim Earl. Jim Earl, okay. We've got it here. Hey, Jim. Hey, Martha. How are you guys? In the name hey. of the Lord. God. Do you, um, you want to say anything to King Chuck before we uh, send him on his way? I would like to introduce... And a lot of people want to send you on your way, too. What, what are their names again? I'm I'm going to send you on your way. Thank Jim you. And Thank, you. And Thank you, King. Hi, guys. Bernard, How are you? Bernard. Mummy. How's the weather out there in Maine today, uh, Jim and Martha? M Mummy. <laughs> beautiful. Is it beautiful? Well, it was it, a beautiful, yes, yeah, spring day. Right. Well, it's kind uh, kind of sunny? beautiful here today too. So, yeah, it's beautiful all over North America. I don't know why people live in Britain. Well, we were supposed to get uh, all your smoke oh. drifting drifting over here, according to is, the. Is that chain. from our cannabis production facility in Canada? That too. Okay, <laughs> but you're also burning a bunch of uh, ancient Egyptian mummies for heat, and that's got to stop. Yes. Why did the Egyptians give it to us? I have no idea. Unless it was our European uh, colonial ancestors brought them over. I'm not sure. You should go every place with a mummy. You live up near uh, where they have bathtub races? Uh, yes, actually, we do during our Klondike days up here. Nanaimo? No, we <laughs> have it up in Edmonton as well. I mean, like, this is a thing. Bathtub races are a thing. I know. Yeah, yeah, Canada. Yeah. You got a river, you got a body of water, you can have a bathtub race. Yeah, we uh I, I we toured uh, Victoria Island. Ah, that's yeah, nice. Went up, went up and down there. No, it was the most horrible gigs we've ever had in our lives. It was just uh we couldn't get wait to get out of there. That was terrible. Really? <laughs> yeah, it was pretty bad. They they hated being uh Canadian. Every every crowd we were at, they wanted to lynch us and send us oh. back to san francisco and well i go up there to victoria i go to the legislature grounds where they have the provincial mansion or offices and you see uh american yachts there all the time really yeah well <clears throat> yeah no. they didn't uh the crowds back then weren't very friendly they just uh they hated the spotted owl and uh didn't like spotted. anybody from San Francisco. <laughs> yeah, the spotted owl. Because, you know, that's why the the wood the, the forests are gone because of the spotted owl, according to what they told us. Those uh, is, uh, spotted owl smoke? Is that why in the lighting on fire? I, it's, it's, yeah. I don't know. You know spotted what? Spotted owl. Yeah. Why don't we get Joe Cook in here? Because um, he always takes a while. So let's, uh, King Chuck, would you introduce, you know what, I'm going to do it myself. Joe? Hey, Walter. Evening. evening Hi, Joe. Jim. Evening, Martha. Evening, hey, Joe. Your Majesty. Hey, Joe. Girl, you know where my mother is. The crown <laughs> is too heavy. 
<laughs> Joe, would you like to let oh. us know? Oh, you know what? I pinned the wrong one. I think I've drank too much brandy. You know, you guys with multiple Zoom accounts, you got to stop that. There we go. There's Joe. Joe in, Joe in Norway. We got the vegetables. There we go. The food he cooked last week was uh, bitter squash or bitter melon, sorry, and a bitter, bitter corn. Melon. And uh, he ate the whole thing. And um, he's, his family renamed him Joe from Sweden. He's a bitter old man. <laughs> I thought I might uh, continue on with the theme. Maybe a little less bitter this time. But uh, I imagine up in Maine, similar to Norway, we're starting to deal with those sweltering, sweltering temperatures that we get, we're so known for. I thought I'd make a, a couple salads. Uh, we've got our butt squash making a, a return again. The chahote, which is nice and crispy. I'll oh, do um, a quinoa salad with a number of different crunchy vegetables, paprika, cucumber, chahote, pomegranate, tomato, some olives, some uh, pumpkin seeds. That's what those are called. Okay. Uh, lime. I see a lime in there. There's lime, that's going to be a different dish here. We've got, so I'm going to make quinoa, which is a whole grain. Okay. Uh, looks like couscous, but it's actually a whole grain instead of pasta, which is what couscous is. And uh, it tends to be bitter, but you need to wash it before you cook it to, to get rid of the bitterness. So um, again, what's similar that, to the whole. What's that to so, your left, Joe? It looks like some European mustard. Bloody piss. Will be the other bitter acquired oh, taste. Tahini is, made uh, out of cucumbers, uh, right? Yes, this, this is uh, fresh from Syria. Mm -hmm. um, uh, sesame paste or tahina, and I'll make a tahina paste with a little midnight snack that I like to treat myself with. And, Do you make uh, your own uh, tahini as well, Joe? Uh, no, it doesn't. Uh, uh, it's a little too costly to to grind your own. Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. And, and I'll uh, be slicing up a little uh, melon to um, liven things up. We'll do something a little fresh. What kind of melon is that? That looks like a cantaloupe from here. But... Okay. Okay. It's a Gaia melon, I believe. A Gaia melon. So it's like a honeydew? Mm -hmm. White plant. It looks like a honeydew, but tastes uh, more like a cantaloupe. All right. So is this going to be edible this time, Joe? Oh, well, uh, you'll... I mean, the last one to, was edible. You'll be happy to know that I've got uh, a few sprigs of coriander here, otherwise no, known as no. cilantro. No, no, no. I what? can't... My body can't take coriander or cilantro. Oh, yeah. yeah young peasant. Uh, my, um, yes. my, my pen is not working again, and I need, uh, I need these ingredients to be... Gone over once more. Is there any way else I could find these ingredients somewhere? And in, in the, the UK, I believe you can find all of these. Yes, yeah. you've got a, a paprika or a banana squash. So a a but Charles, squash. Charles is uh, is shooting blanks. Is that what the problem is? Uh, they won't give me a normal pen. Everything has to be a bloody <laughs> fountain pen. Oh, oh that pen. Quite annoying. Quite annoying. We could we could ask Harry's dad if he is. <laughs> Just saying. Okay, Joe. Harry. We're gonna we're gonna. Is that it, Joe? Yeah. So Let I'll you... just uh, I'll make a quick salad. We'll cook cook the the quinoa up. Fortunately, it's cold enough out here that I'll put it out on the balcony to cool off just in time to toss with the salad. And it's a nice, crunchy, festive. Summary salad. That's uh, those gherkins really remind me of my wedding night. <laughs> oh my god! Or a gherkin. Or a fair. Sorry, I'm into, I'm interjecting. I do apologize. Okay, well, thank we'll you. Thanks cracking. for apologizing. As a king, you don't have to. You know, you can do what you want. So, hi, Jim and Martha. Sorry, we're we're kind of off Wally. to a slow start today. Hi, Wally. How are hi. you? Oh, good, good. My eyes are clearing up. Uh, they got red from the smoke, but the smoke's clearing up like we were talking about. So 
Oh, that's Appreciate good. Appreciate that. Hey, I've got a question for you, if you don't mind. Certainly. How did you guys get involved in this um, uh, racket you call showbiz? Like, how did you become writers and impressionists? And is that a loaded question? Can I ask that question? Is it a secret? It's a secret. I could ask John Stewart. He'll know. And John Stewart wouldn't know because... <laughs> no, he wouldn't. Uh, it's a secret and I'll never reveal it. Okay, it was 25 years ago today that I... No, in... Uh... In 19, when I graduated from uh, college, uh, I was living in Berkeley, and uh, there, there was this place called the Holy City Zoo across uh, the bay in, in San Francisco on Clement Street. And uh, would, you could go up there any like five nights a week and do uh, open mics. And uh, I went up there a couple of times alone, but then I started going up with my uh, high school friend, Barry Lank, and we went up as a team. And we did a lot of dumb, kind of offbeat, stupid sketch bits and uh, characters. And uh, we made fun of show business a lot, made fun of uh, comedy a lot. And uh, we had a lot of fun doing it. Were and you then, Lank and Earl or Earl yeah, and Lank? Lank? Lank and Earl. Earl and Lank doesn't have a ring to it, no, I, even, I though like it, it. even though it is more justified. But I... <laughs> Alphabetically gave, correct. So if you're OCD, it would be correct. So forgive yeah. me, but isn't referring to the holy city as a zoo anti-Semitic? Is the the what? Referring to the holy city as a zoo anti-Semitic. Uh I don't understand the question, all right? Okay. What, what is this? You know, it's it's your accent, King Charles, has thrown me off. <laughs> and uh, I'm thinking referring to the holy city as a zoo, is it not a little bit anti-Semitic? Oh, no, no, right. no. The Holy City, it's a, it was called the Holy City Zoo because there was this kind of cult, the hippie cult that uh, was situated down in the South Bay and around, around San Jose somewhere that called themselves the Holy City and it had a bunch of shambling wood buildings. And um, so but for some reason, people... Uh, somebody who uh, owned that little business where the Holy City Zoo would become uh, transported a bunch of those old plank boards up there and put them on the outside of their, their building, their office and, uh, and on the inside and made a stage and uh, became a open mic night for, uh, for, uh, folk, for uh, and Earl. folk artists and early comics in the, in the mid seventies. And then, uh, they called it the Holy City Zoo, and you know Robin Williams, people like that, all started hairy, out there. Hairy um, arms, very hairy arms. That man is true. And we went up uh, first, started going up in, in 1985, I think. And we went up for about six months, and then one night we were leaving the the club, and uh, and the manager came out and said, "Hey, you forgot your money." And then, <laughs> what we're we're getting paid for this? <clears throat> you got hooked. Yeah, you know? and that that's it, it's like an addiction, and it's it's not a very safe addiction by that. But, by the way, it's uh, but that's how you get started. You get hooked on it. You mm -hmm. get paid for doing something that you never intended to get paid for, and then do you, do you like doing stand up, Jim? I do. I do. Uh, uh, people in Victoria didn't like it, but that's okay. No, they didn't like. <laughs> they, right. You know the the audience in Victoria, like up and down the coast there, up and down the island, it was uh, full of uh, guys in uh, like Americans, leather full tank Americans. tops, with leather tank tops with uh, uh, Bowie knives hanging from their their belts, and uh, and a was... microbrewery on every corner. So... No, they didn't have them back then. Oh, no, it was okay. just a uh, you know Bud Light and Coors <laughs> and hostility and uh, bloody fights in the front row and uh, trying to get out of the the club in time before they started coming at you. Check your knives at the door. Those kind of signs. Yeah. Well, can I switch over to Martha? Martha, how did you get involved? May I ask? 
How did you get into this impression stuff? Uh, we're going to blame Jim. Yeah, I, I everybody does, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, as a kid, I always uh, uh, admired, uh, I forget his name now. <laughs> um, was okay. it Rich Little? Rich Little, yes. And Robin Williams um, was another big, um, huge influence of mine. And um, I, I, yeah, I, I, uh, and I always, I did impressions mostly of family members, uh, like my aunt Martha, uh, whom I'm named after, and she had kind of a, a Mar Susan Collins voice. Um, so I, I think that's how I, I started when I was really young, just mimicking family members. Mm -hmm. And uh, then when uh, I, I met Jim and I had the opportunity to uh, do Susan Collins on uh, the Feldman show, I, I was so happy to to be able to, to do that because uh, it's something I've, I've never done before. And um, I really like doing it. Well, your Martha Stewart is fantastic too. As oh, well. thank you. You're thank welcome. you very much. <laughs> <laughs> think, and Susan Collins is going to make a visit if you have time. Uh, I, I think we have time. Eventually. I also have an obituary of the, the uh, post-it post -it notes guy. Uh, we we would absolutely love to hear that. Do you do you feel in the mood to do that right now, or do you want to wait sure. a bit? Or I could do, you do that. Some, right, you got right any now. questions? No, no questions. Okay, all right. Let me, um, as usual, remove myself from the screen, and uh, you know, Jim, you go yes. ahead. You go ahead, boss. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. This is all right. Hello, everybody. Uh, <laughs> this is. Uh, <laughs> My obituary of uh, Spencer Silver, the post-it notes guy. And uh, it goes something like this. Spencer Silver, the 3M employee who helped invent the post-it note, is finally gone after sticking around for way too long. Silver invented the adhesive used on the backs of post-it notes. The most popular office supply disgruntled employees like to steal when they can't fit a stapler in their pants. He reportedly died at his home, surrounded by a lifetime of sticky residue. Sticky residue. According to his family, the last few years of his life saw the aging inventor become yellowed and detached from his friends, dying without even leaving a note. Siblings remember Silver as a very needy child who could become easily attached. Look forward to a lot more jokes like that. In 2013, Silver told CNN that his invention took off so rapidly at 3M that it, quote, left a lot of people in marketing and sales gasping a bit, unquote. Later turned out that they were only gasping because marketing and sales was right next to 3M's tear gas silo. <laughs> to make a lot of hazardous materials, toxic gases and stuff. That's the gist of that joke. <clears throat> Moving on. Hoping to exploit the success of Post-it Notes, 3M introduced other less popular spin-off products like I Hate My Life Notes, Nutty Fudge Notes, <laughs> Sticky Penis Press Pads, <laughs> Memo Square Paper Glue Piles, There Goes Another Tree Notes, Munchausen by Proxy Peel Pads, <laughs> Acrylate copolymer microspheres without gluten. Adhesive pad paper scribble things. Stuff it notes and asbestos cancer notes with nuts. <laughs> the deceased requested he be buried beneath a bunch of other notes. <laughs> he never got around to reading, reminding him not to die. And that was... That was uh, Spencer Silver, the post-it notes guy who invented the adhesive. And thusly ends his life and mine 
That's it. I I totally like that, and I'm just having mouse troubles. My auto mouse. You having mouse troubles? Yeah. <laughs> You ever have a mouse uh, accident, uh, your wrist? Yes, I do. You know who invented the mouse? The that that uh, I think find it with God. What's his name? Steve Kirch, the anti-vaccine pseudoscience nutcase. Uh, he he invent oh, or he invented a type of mouse. I guess he invented something to do with the computer mouse. So, uh, so Steve Jobs was amazed by this fellow, or somebody was. I I, I don't know. I don't know what to say. I'm very lackadaisical today, so I I apologize. But uh, oh oh, Holy moly. We, we have Susan Collins here. Hello. Hello, Susan. Hello, <laughs> mommy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Jim, what you. is Susan doing here? <laughs> well, so I, I believe. Uh, uh, yes, Susan, uh, Senator. I, I believe, Senator, you were going to uh, inform people about uh, the danger of ticks. Uh, it's May is Tick Month, Awareness Month in, in Maine, in the state of Maine. Right. That's, we, that's important. That's right, Jimmy. May has always been my favorite time of year because it's Lyme Disease Awareness Month. Did you know that? Well, I, well, I know it now, Senator. That's uh, that's amazing and uh, scintillating news. Do you, do you have any th tidbits to? Uh, do impart? you have a problem with big ticks? Uh. Uh, not me. I bet you're wondering how we combat ticks in Maine. Personally, I like to use one of those giant leaf vacuums to vacuum up ticks. I guess you could say I'm a real tick sucker. <laughs> what? What? What was that? I'm a real tick sucker. <laughs> That's, that's what I, th I thought you said. Okay. I'm Senator Susan Collins, and I'm a real tick sucker. Okay. <laughs> well, the Did third time's, know, third time's we, the charm. We have an abundance of big ticks here in Maine, Jimmy. Well, that's news to me. <laughs> some are scaly, some are stubby, but all ticks carry diseases. Last well, year, over 1,400 Mainers were infected because they left some tick. They left some tick. Let me repeat that. Last year, over 1,400 Mainers were infected because they let some tick put his thing in them. Well, that's, 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 uh, that's a big problem here in Maine. Never let a tick enter your body because once it does, it just gets bigger. It gets bigger, and when when he's had his fill, the tick explodes inside of you and leaves you with the hotel bill. <laughs> yeah. Well, you don't yeah. want that to happen. That's that's a that's a very uh, unfortunate event. Well. We have a lot of tick experts in my state. Maine is really full of tick heads. <laughs> I mean, I'll second that. We have a great big tick problem. And I've got some great big tick tips for everyone. Oh, a great. tick talk. <laughs> tick tip number one. Never wear a used Maine moose merkin unless it's been approved by the official Maine Moose Merkin Bureau of Ticks, Meth Lab Fires, and Lumber Mill Maimings. Oh, yeah, we have a lot of m Lumber Mill Maimings here in Maine. Yes, we do. And tick tip number two. Always check for ticks before coming indoors. Jimmy, did you know 
Maine has the highest rate of Lyme disease of any state. Well, we're number one. Well, that's why I haven't personally met with any of my constituents in over 30 years. Because every time I meet a constituent, I have to do another tick check. I'm safer around a town hall full of infested woodchucks. And believe me, that happens a lot here in Maine, more often than you think. And another thing is, they all smell like bad sex and lobster. (laughs) Which is... By the way, the slogan on our state flag, Maine, (laughs) bad sex and lobster. Did you also know that Maine has the highest rate of big tick disease of any state? But how bad is it, you ask? The state of Maine now has two astronauts living in the International Space Station. Every time they return from a spacewalk, the Russians have to do a tick check. (laughs) This is why I have proposed a solution. I'm talking about the Susan Collins Big Tick Act. (laughs) Big, big what act? The Susan Collins Big Tick Act. That's okay. You can fill in the blanks yourself with that one. I mean, how many times do I have to say big tick before you get the message? Mm -hmm. And speaking of tick heads, I am proud to announce the opening of the 103rd season of Mainer's favorite dining establishment. Joe's butt steak and cornhole shack. What? Let's try Joe's Joe's butt steak and cornhole shack. <laughs> Let's drive up to Joe's from some for some good old fashioned juicy hot main butt and cornholing, <laughs> and bring the kids. <laughs> That's Joe's butt steak and cornhole shack. Come for the cornhole. Stay for the long COVID. <laughs> <coughs> Thank you for coming to my TikTok. I'm Senator Susan Collins of Maine, and I'm full of seagull guano. <laughs> wow. Things are uh, really... Uh... Well, things are down to earth here, way up here in Maine. Is what we're trying to say, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Wally. Uh, and I, I think you're you're hoping Susan Susan Collins will be down to earth too one of these days. Well, I mean, like not to talk yellow the woman, but old senators never die; they just smell that way. <laughs> yeah, you know, cornhole uh, cornholing is a big uh, sport up here in Maine. Yeah, and uh, you're you're it's it's um it's pork country too, ain't it? I mean, it's, it's anything you it's anything you want it to be. <laughs> that's, that's true. I'm still get, trying to get over your your burning mooses going out in the bush and burning the state down <laughs> from last week. So, <laughs> Susan Collins, thank you very much for attending. Thank- Thank you. Thank I mean, you. It's an honor. Jim and Martha have pull, I tell you, to Thank get Susan you. here. Everybody. Susan Collins. Well, everybody has pull at the cornholing. <laughs> <laughs> what? What I say? What you, you people get you get your minds out of the gutter. This is disgusting. Cornholing is a perfectly innocent family game uh performed out on the lot front lawn for for the everyone to see in the village uh, we wow. call it incest <sighs> the game the whole family can play family see, show kelly in nebraska says uh, the cornhole game is a big game in uh oh <laughs> 
<laughs> Apparently not in the brass. What is it? Sorry. Well, besides the connotations, is there actually a cornhole game? Oh, yes. Yes, they have a cornhole competitions. It's basically you uh, chuck bean bags at some kind of round circular thing. Isn't that right, uh, uh, Susan Collins, Martha? Uh, well, I'm no cornhole expert. Um, but yes, it is. It's um, very popular around here, especially um, for the you know, the fun and games and the festivities um, that we take well part in here in the pine tree state, also known as vacation land. Yeah, I got to get to Maine. I got to get to Maine one day. We throw moose up here, so that's, that's what we throw. <laughs> yeah, we have moose too. We have moose too. Yeah, we have not, it's not a competition, okay? We, yes. we, have, we have moose as well. Ian is now you. I, you know, I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. <laughs> I don't mean to get hostile. I don't mean to get angry. Raise my voice. I'm, sorry. Jim represents the state of Maine aggressively. I do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, keep the fuck out of Maine. Get out of our state. We don't. We don't need any young people or immigrants. We're just gonna be a bunch of elderly white people screaming at each other and then we're going to uh, collapse into a pile of dust that's all we need well we we could um like dave from pa says we could change our name to the anonymous uh collective. anonymous collective <laughs> right that would, that would kind of fit in with the theme you brought up moose jim man i i don't know what your strange attraction to moose is but uh people talk so i'd, I'd be careful it's a funny name. It's a funny word like kumquat. That's true. Not as funny as cilantro. So let's check in with Joe if we can take a minute here because he's uh, he's working like the Dickens today. He's trying to feed everybody. Hi, Joe. Hey there. We, we got uh, most of the salad made. We got half of it. We're just waiting for the cave wall to finish. Um, you know that salad then... would look good with some corn in it. Well, we're a little uh, shy of corn up here in, in Norway. Okay. Most of the corn we get here for eating, we wouldn't feed to cattle in Ohio where I come from. Okay, we call that so, pig corn. Yeah. Okay. So, but um, we're almost uh, almost finished with the salad, and I'll be starting on the tiny sauce with a little extra coriander dude, there. Dude, dude. Cilantro. Cilantro kills. I love cilantro. I can eat a whole bunch of cilantro raw in my hand. You know that mixed salad? If there's one piece of cilantro in, I throw it out. And, and oh, this this one is a, a cilantro free salad. We got dill and parsley. Dill, and dill's good. Olives, good. Onion, uh, shallots, mm -hmm. the butt squash. Green paprika or, or banana squash, uh, banana pepper, and so then what? I'll make a Dijon. I'll make a Dijon uh, dressing to pour over it once the the quinoa is finished. Right now, with um, the butt squash in there, mm -hmm. and that's not a very pleasant taste, right? But does it offset it? With no, no, it's it's very nice. So the the squash is a crunchy. It's semi it's not really sweet it's kind of like jicama if you've ever had jicama okay yeah somewhere between a rutabaga and jicama something like that it's a little more juicy than jicama i think right but you, oh, we got the I'd, I'd put that on a finished. taco right there yeah, so basically I, i've i've been using it in in a lot of different salads or sauteing it, it basically has a ni really nice texture when you use it raw and salt it quickly like a quick pickle it maintains the crunch really well it's not as hard as celery but it's much harder than um, cucumber for example and it's quite nice so right. it's start, starting to get festive right so you mm, it smells delicious <laughs> smell -o vision well thank mm. you joe appreciate it now now i'm gonna take the quinoa out and 
we'll put it on a tray and shove it outside to cool really quickly. And okay, you still got other, snow up in stuff. Norway, Joe? Uh, out in the mountains, we've got it still year round. We we can I can stand at the turquoise white sand beach and be freezing cold, staring at uh, snow capped mountains. Snow capped mountain. What an English word. Mm. Thank you, Joe. Uh, King Chuck, do you got any questions of uh, Jim and Martha or anybody in the audience? I, I don't know what the hell any of you have been talking about for the last hour. So, uh, your accents are very, very peculiar. Um, I, I, I have one question uh, Have you seen my mother? <laughs> yeah. She's... Have you seen my mother? And she by that, to... I don't mean on the back of a coin. I mean, she seems to have gone missing. I woke right. up the other day with a big hat on, everybody fawning over me, and I have, quite frankly, blanked the last ooh, eight or nine months. I saw your mother uh, the other day. She's looking great. Is that gray or great? Better than she's ever looked before. That is impossible. She's the... Vision of perfection seems to have gone missing, and nobody's telling me where she is. Same goes for my son. He's a bit of a ginge, and he's gone off with the lady of a darker hue. But I've, uh, <laughs> and I, I don't know what's going on. Everybody's shouting at me. I can't work a pens anymore. I don't know how to work a pen. It's all very strange. I think I've been taken over by some spirits from the lord above thank you King camilla yeah camilla yeah she is she you were speaking of moose earlier and, uh, <laughs> one would say she reminds one of a moose um by that i mean she's strong uh steadfast and a, a, a pillar of the environment However, uh, she also has sort of felt like horns, which uh, need to be described such, as large hats. Is, yeah. is there such a thing as a Camilla Merkin? I'm just curious. More than likely, <laughs> I've, I've, I've heard it said. She won't let me go near the damn thing at the moment. Something to do with COVID or something like that, I do. Mind you, the butler's in and out long enough, so by in and out, I do mean in and out, yes. <laughs> Uh, thank you, King. thank you, King Chuck. Oh my God. <laughs> Good evening, <laughs> and uh, may God bless you all. Right. Are there any other questions from our from our audience? He's a very shy shy bunch, eh? And uh, if so, what we need is people to uh, get the link in the description, get the newsletter, get the Zoom link, and join us on Friday nights uh, on After Hours. So I got a question. Uh, Mr. DeSantis is uh, said he's going to run for president, and Tim Scott. Do you? Uh, I I imagine you keep up with politics in your country. Do you? Uh, what are your thoughts? Any? <laughs> <laughs> Don't care. <laughs> huh. Biden twenty twenty four. Is that what's what's happening here? What? I don't understand a word you're saying. Well, I was talking to Jim and Martha. That's oh, I, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I thought you're. Yeah. <laughs> That's your cue, Jim and Martha. <laughs> uh, I was, uh, I was staring at the king there. Oh, his, yeah, his head, a, headdress. He's a nice yeah. looking looking person. Uh, I think. Uh, I think. Uh, uh, well, Joe Biden is doing everything he possibly can to. Uh, guarantee his loss. Uh, that's what I think. And uh, do you Donald, got facts to back that up, Jim? Uh, if he's a terrible, uh, he, he can't he, he can't bargain at all. I mean, not bargain. He's a terrible negotiator. What he's doing now is just disgustingly inept and and incompetent with the so-called debt limit. It should have been taken care of when the you know Democrats had control over Congress. Oh, I agree with that. Yes. Yeah. You know, why are Why are we doing this now? 
Mm-hmm. And he's, you know, he's, uh, you know, he's considering, uh, you know, stiffening work requirements for basically throwing a, a million people, poor people off of Medicare. And yeah, Bill Clinton was, proved that doesn't work. So, yeah, it's a horrible yeah. person, you know, and he's he's basically he might get his wish. He's been, you know, he always bragged about his 50 year uh, record of uh, trying to cut Medicaid and social security and Medicare. Mm -hmm. So he may get his wish finally again. Um, DeSantis, DeSantis, I think, uh, I think, I don't think he'll, uh, I think Trump will probably win the nomination. Meatball Ron. Meatball Ron. (laughs) This is some spicy meatball. Meatball Ron. Um. Yeah. Yeah. I. You know. Just from outside looking in, I. W- I would think Trump Scott. Um, got the lane, and uh, obviously it kind of looks like Biden. Is, any other Democrats come out? Oh, besides Robert Kennedy. Oh, Robert Kennedy. Mm. Oh God. Mm. <laughs> it's just, uh, it, this is the worst. I. You know. I'm. I was born in 1959, and this is probably one of the worst election years I've ever seen. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, it's like Kelly says here, Marianne Williams, who I actually generally, genuinely like. I, I think she's a nice person. Marianne Williams, yeah, except except for her COVID stance, which I think she's kind of backed away from. Mm-hmm. Uh, didn't Didn't Kennedy back away from his stance, or is he still all? No, he he's he's a he's rabid rabid pseudoscience nutcase and uh, anti vaccine vaccines that. vaccines cause autism and all this uh, disproven. Well, the great bullshit. great Canadian Jim Carrey also thought that was a thing when he was uh, mm-hmm. seeing that girl. He's uh, he's gone to religion now. He's he's been born again practically. Well, he looks like Jesus now. Yeah. So with that with with that beard. Uh, the Queen of Canada, though, uh, Celine Dion, has cancelled uh, 42 I shows. I your bloody pardon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 42 <laughs> shows, and she has um, a disease, uh, statue syndrome, something like that, where her nerves, I think everything freezes. And so we designed her like that up in Canada. We said, that's it. You're up to your age. You, you still look good. Uh, we're going to freeze you and put you out in front of Ottawa. So if you do a gig out in Ottawa, Jim and Martha, go see go see Celine and uh, give her your respects. Ottawa is that on the left part or the right part of that? Your it's big... left left of uh, La Belle Province, Quebec. So it's to La the Belle. left. La what was in the center of the? Uh, of... I don't know anything about Canada. On your left, you got Vancouver. On the right, there's Nova Scotia. Yeah, sure, we'll go with that. Yeah. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> sure we got newfoundland labrador or actually we got an island that we were fighting with denmark uh for years is to the to the right and uh we leave a bottle of whiskey they leave a bottle of advic aquavit and uh hopefully the war will be over soon i'm coming to take it back in 2030 <laughs> nice. so who do you who do you think is going to become the gop nominee Well, I'm going to give you a terrible secret. Uh, up in Canada, when Hillary and Trump were running, we thought, oh, this is a lose-lose. Um, just to be honest, uh, you know, a couple of people thought, like I was in conversations with, thought, well, at least Trump won't start a war. And that was kind of kind of right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you were. Absolutely. <laughs> However, Absolutely. he started a civil war inside the country, though, right? Yeah. So that January didn't... January 6th guy uh, got charged 18 years? Yes. You're right. And what did he do? Just He just led uh, tourists in to, to look at uh, at the Capitol, right? I think he was had to do with incitement, organiz, uh, organizing, conspiracy. He's got one thing. eye, Jim. He's got one eye. Come on now. 18 years. You should get nine years, half. You should get. 
Well, you know, we could poke out his second eye and and give him four and a half. <laughs> Split the difference. Uh, just send him to a cornhole uh, competition and see what happens. That's right. His That's eye right. sockets could be the uh, beanbag uh, right. folders. Yeah, I'm, I'm not good at American politics. I can barely do our own. And He could uh, have gotten time off for having a shit in uh, Pelosi's drawer. Yeah. I would have given time off for that. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I, I'm trying. I'm trying to figure that out. <laughs> you mean your office drawer? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, he, just need the, he just had a nice big poo in that drawer, and I'd be mm. no, let him off. He's he's done a service to society. Let him <laughs> yeah, off. Let him go. That's true. Know, too. I think it's in the Constitution. If you lay some pipe in the speaker's drawer. Um, you know that's uh, that's treason. Is it Amendment Number Two or Number One? And that's a that's oh. a song by a great Canadian band uh, that I've forgotten the name of. To Lane Pipe all night long. You probably never heard it, Joe. Let's let's go to you, Joe. Before <laughs> <laughs> I'm losing the thread here. No problems. Well, I just finished making the tuna sauce which is a popular Middle Eastern dish that's used as a base for making hummus. So you, right. you can make uh, tena first, and then you grind the, the chickpeas to make uh, mix it together to make hummus. But uh, I like it uh, just by itself on toast or... You're, you're saying you made hummus. it, Joe, but isn't that out of a jar? Well, <laughs> all right. And you're putting stuff in it. I get it. I get it. Well, basically, it's like peanut butter, but sesame. And in order to make the, the sauce, you gradually add in uh, ice cold water and it'll uh, uh, coagulate. Okay. So don't, don't uh, be afraid. It'll all clump together. But if you add a little bit more water at a time, It'll eventually get nice and creamy like this. And you can make it as thick or thin as you like. And Looks one of the fun. things that I really like to do um, middle of the night, you get some pickled pickled chilies and sambal. Okay. And one of these uh, famous, oh my God, they've been all eaten. Are, oh, <laughs> Our, um, it's fascinating cardboard TV, crackers. Joe. Can't remember the name of them. Uh, lots of crackers are very nice. Any kind of Melba biscuit toast. or bread. You can use to toast is nice, but basically we take some plana, spread it on the bread or toast. Mm -hmm. Add some chili paste and then sprinkle some cucumbers on top. We got a quick, easy sandwich. It's got lots of protein. The, the tarina is uh, full of protein. It's nice and bitter. Uh, it's an acquired taste. Some people don't like it at first, so give yourself some, some time to... Uh, acclimate to, to the bitterness, but um, once you, you gain that uh, appreciation, it's uh, addictive. And, like a bitter uh, gourd. Again, keeps the blood sugar down, that, 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 these kinds of foods. So, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, very nice. Uh, should, do you want, do you guys want these recipes, um, Jim or Martha? Uh, we'll get them I, to you. Hell, so, why not? Yeah. Yeah. So I'll, I'll be posting them to the Discord and then eventually the, the website. Uh, like I mentioned, I don't really have recipes, so I have kind of recipe-ish recipes. That's so right. Give it a good idea. We'll, we'll work on those. So you're waiting for your quinoa to cool, right, Joe? It's out on the balcony at the moment, and I'll be bringing okay. it in soon. Yeah. All right. Sounds good. First, I'll start to slice up a melon. Okay. And then... Uh, We'll present that nicely for 
Sounds good. That's the yeah. party. Jim, what are you presenting us with here? Um, Ooh. I'm just I'm just looking at the nice vegetables. Uh, I love leaves. <laughs> leaves. And any, anything leaf related. Mommy, you know? there she is. Hey, shut the <laughs> shut, shut the fuck up! All right, shut your sauce box. Yeah, shut Sorry your sauce. About that. Sorry excuse about my that. excuse I my language. Uh, hey, uh, I just want to call attention to uh, what's happening to all the koalas in uh, Australia. Okay, we, uh, what's what's happening to them? Well, our hab habitats. <clears throat> Excuse me, hairball. <laughs> uh, our habitats are all being wiped out by fires. And uh, you know, we need help. Uh, you gotta you gotta send some money down to uh the uh wall rescue hospitals. And uh also you can just probably send it to Jim Earl's patron account because uh he'll 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 take that money and he'll use it to buy gas. <laughs> I got nothing. <laughs> yeah, you you sure do have nothing, asshole. I don't think hey. Hey, hey, you, you can't don't start, speak that way to these nice people. Yeah, well, fucking hairball. hairball. I tell you. <clears throat> yeah. right. If I if I sent more criminals down to Australia, would that help? Yeah, uh, sure, send us there's a many more criminals down here. Mm. Yeah, we need a lot more criminals in Australia. Thanks a yeah. lot, wise guy. Yes. Yeah. Take a lot of fire hands, yes. Well, you know, the, the family that has puppets together stays together, so that's, that's quite <laughs> nice. We're not puppets. Uh, sorry, my bad. <laughs> what, 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 up, what are up we? in Canada, that'd be good eating. So. <laughs> <laughs> Hey. You're saying, well, thank you. And I see there's no questions from the audience. These guys are no. Late. Why would the why would it be questions after something <laughs> like that? I don't know. Kelly's going. Uh, uh, her kids would love love that. Um, that that's a that's a YouTube show on its own. Yeah, I've got a TikTok channel already. Uh, you can, oh, uh, you do. Where can Koala they find it? Lafong. Koala Lafong at TikTok. Koala. L A L A F O N G. Yeah, read Lafong my lips. At read. TikTok. Okay. Koala Lafong. All right. At TikTok. Okay. So. And on YouTube, uh, you have at Jim Earl on YouTube. And you also have uh, at Martha Previtt. Uh, where you can find some clips and Koala Lafong on TikTok. On TikTok and Facebook. Okay. Do you do you tweet at all, you guys? Do you do the uh, Twitter? Yeah, I have a Twitter account too. Is it under your name, Martha Previtt? Oh, uh, it's under Koala Lafong. Oh, that koala's got a following then, right? Oh yeah, I sure do. All right. And what what's the name uh, uh, of of that one, Jim? Yeah, I really think it's kind of weird that you're you know talking to us like <laughs> these are real. You know, I think there's, there's some kind. Of, you have a Walter. This is sick. I grew basically. up on cartoons. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if you're into cartoons, the Venture Brothers are at one a.m. tonight. So, the what brothers? Yeah, that's what I said when I first heard about them. The what? Uh, Venture Brothers. It's a it's a henchman cartoon. Uh, you know what? You have to show up and see it. I mean, there's a lot of activities going on this uh, this weekend. Uh, we've got um, shop talk, and we've got uh, sickle, which is uh, garden talk, and then we got lane talk, and that's twenty four seven, right? So, just saying, lane talk. Mm -hmm. Oh, Listen. not anymore after that, Snyder Mark. You just see. <laughs> I'll be blanking it out when you're just sitting there twiddling your thumbs. I'll not be rambling and about fucking anything in my head like I usually do. 
No, I, I like it. I like it when you when you do that. King mm-hmm. King King Chuck is like he he took his um, Neo Citron tonight through something. He's a little yes, bit... he's uh, mingling with the natives in that picture. Yes, yeah, that's right. He, he likes to mingle with the natives as long as he's inebriated, he's fine. So Koala Lalong, La Lafong, Lafong, Lalong, <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> What kind of host are you? This Not is, much of one, I'll tell you that. This is an outrage. It, it definitely is. It definitely is. And and Jim, you should get some sun. Just a little bit more would be nice. <laughs> well, I'm in Maine. <laughs> Wait a minute. Here. Uh, this will help. Martha, you got to take Jim out for a walk. You know, you just. I gonna... will. Yes. That yeah. sounds like a plan. There you go. Or some for for some cornhole. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, that's between you two. So hey, you got some tan now, Jim. That's pretty good. I got uh... all right. Well, you know what, guys? I, I'm gonna thank you for showing up unless you wanna you wanna ask us any questions, like what what the fuck are you guys doing on this YouTube thing? But the, the peasant we, we don't Joe, know. We're just we're just doing it. The peasant Joe has his hand up. Does he? Yeah. Oh man, but then. Yes, please. Kelly, go, go ahead. Kelly in Nebraska was asking earlier what you could do with sumac. Sumac is a little very popular in the Middle East. And um, it's typically ground into a powder like this. Right. And one of the easiest things to do in the summer is to slice up some melon, salt it a little. Mm-hmm. And then sprinkle some sumac on it. The sumac has a lot of vitamin C, so it's a bit like uh, a lemony taste. Right. And From Syria? Ni- nice. Syria, the Middle East. It's mm-hmm. popular in the Middle East. I like how you, you could cook also, local, Joe. for example, you could also sprinkle it on your Thai nut instead of paprika. You can use that. Or you could take shallots. One of the popular ways to prepare it is to slice uh, uh, onions and then sprinkle, su- toss sumac in with it. It uh, uh, brings out a lot of uh, color and people typically use that on grilled meats. I notice you like to say the word paprika, like Charles Bronson would, would say it. Paprika. Paprika. Uh, in Norway, they we we say paprika instead of red pepper. So I, I constant. I, I'm losing my English, not gaining enough Norwegian. But I'm losing my English gradually. So well, I, I, ju- I just want to this. point out: yes. you live in Norway, and you're bringing stuff in from Egypt and from Syria. Why don't I mean you're in well, Norway, though? Well, that's one of the benefits of U.S. imperialism. Sadly, we have a lot of immigrants uh, that come from the Middle East, uh, North Africa, a lot of hot zones over the past 20 some odd years. There's even uh, people from Vietnam. Um, But yeah, they've come, they've opened up grocery stores and they import uh, fresh foods uh, that uh, aren't traditionally. available here well that's that's uh, that's just awesome because you have experience with middle east cuisine right uh, yes i I typically so so you you like this Mm -hmm. it's it's the closest i get to sun Hmm. yeah norway norwegian or joe from sweden either one so so this is a very very uh simple simple dish Mm -hmm. melon and sumac we have poison yeah. sumac in Maine. Oh, this one's a little different. Because it, give, it gives you a, a good rash, kind of like poison ivy. Yes, yes. Uh, we had that in Ohio as well. That's right, yeah. But um, going back to your ticks there uh, that you were talking about, yeah, they're actually getting atrocious uh, up here uh, with the sun. It's mm. just... Uh, we talked about it last time. Everything's moving north, right? And then with the forest fires, we got the bear and the moose moving south. So there's something's going to happen. I'm not sure. Well, everything's screwed up. 
that's what's happening. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, ice is melting. Things are getting warmer longer. Yeah. And uh, flooding. Weather's getting screwed up. Yeah. 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 But uh, I think think Martha and I read uh, a, a scientific article a few years back saying that global warming would make uh, uh, Maine a very a much more livable state than the rest of the United States, uh, primarily because it will kill most of the Mainers. <laughs> no, but because the weather will be uh, easier. To, easier up here for some reason but not with the ticks the ticks are right. coming out are, in force are winters actually harsh in maine uh is it like the northeastern winds and stuff like that yeah generally we we have a lot of snow um okay. yeah and cold and cold yeah all right yeah sounds good well i guess <laughs> i guess we should move over to the professors um sooner or later Martha, Jim, I want to thank you so much for, for showing up. Thank you. Well, the stuff you guys do is precious. So um, I, I'm glad we got to record it and and play it for people who want to see it. And uh, will you come back again? Absolutely. Absolutely. Jeez, you guys are just the greatest. Thank you very much. Oh, thank, well, thank you. All right. You take care. It's a, been a pleasure. It well, has been, good. and actually, you you look good in that light, uh, Jim. I got it. Uh, I'll say. <laughs> Thank you very much. Oh, and yeah. Lee's got a question. Hold on. Oh no, no, she sure. doesn't. She's hand clapping silently. That's pretty neat. The the power of Zoom, right? So, thank you guys. See you later. Thank you. Clean it with bleach. <laughs> <laughs> it's good for your plants too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Joe, we'll uh, we'll pop in one more time before we bring in the professors. Uh, yeah, I've, I've got one quick tip for anyone who, who likes pomegranate. You know what? Let's put you front and center. Tell us about it, Joe. Okay, sure. You, you go, Joe. Top, you cut the top off so you can see the segments. It's segmented into five or six different uh, pieces, slice, slice down, mm -hmm. and then rip it apart and throw it into a bowl of water and you can separate the seeds from the flesh from the, the oh i'm not sure what, what's the word oh and then all of the the scrap pieces float and the seeds sink to the bottom and then you've got the quick and easy separation of of your um pomegranate from what you're going to throw away awesome easy peasy Okay, and it sounds Throw good. Throw those into the salad next. We're looking forward to it. Okay, so let's uh, let's uh, boy oh boy, it's been a hard week here. So uh, forgive me, but uh, let's bring in the professors. And of course, everybody's got two icons. Got to have two icons. <laughs> Hiya, Professor John. How you doing? Hey, you... how are you, Walter? Uh, I'm doing. I'm doing. doing a bang up job here. Am I? I, you know, I feel like introductory um, uh, YouTube specials. It is special. It is very special. <laughs> and and speaking of special, we have uh, Professor Ann Lee, or or maybe not. I. Oh, who is, is this? Uh... It looks like Subcomandante Marcos. No. <laughs> um, what? What is that? I don't that? know. She's she's muted. Whoa. She's muted. I was just demonstrating my moose puppet. No, it's me. It's me. I'm here. I'm here. Hello. Oh, okay, Professor Ann Lee, and Professor Ann Lee writes the column for the Daily Costs. I read her every night. Uh, she's the last thing I read before I go to sleep. Uh, and she's under the pen name Annie Lee under Daily Kos, KOS, usually about Ukraine. And Professor John is a political scientist teacher, and he teaches us a lot, especially about Twilight Zone, which has sometimes a political overtone. 
How's that for an introduction, Joe? Many times, Walter. Many times. Yeah, then don't forget Star Trek. We look into the uh, Star Trek, and then we got Columbo. Of that and Columbo as well. That's yeah. right. You're right. And then uh, you tell us in what way I'm wrong. So I appreciate that very much. And uh... oh, happy to do that. <laughs> you give me lots of opportunities, Walter. Join, so join the lineup, John. Join the lineup. <laughs> <laughs> um. Uh, professor, professor, incognito Ann, I, I have no words for you. Um, oh, no, I'm just workshopping an idea. It's, uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about Patriot Front tonight and, uh, a fellow who I think is, uh, a heroic patriot himself, uh, Joe Flood, the photographer from Washington, D.C., who decided to rent a, uh, a little red bicycle and uh, insult them during their demonstration. Uh, Patriot Front is a right-wing group and they tend to try to disrupt uh, uh, left uh, liberal uh, demonstrations by just showing up and yelling at people. So wow. I'm doing a little uh, homage, an homage to them because I... they are all dressed in uh, blue, uh, uh, blue polo shirts and khakis and uh, uh, golf hats of one kind or another and wear white b balaclavas. Uh, I misplaced my own white balaclava, but I decided to find an, I found a blue one. So we'll see how this works out. Uh, I, it just I'm doing oh. a regular thing here. I'm not sure this can become a character uh, uh, inexperienced as I am with stand up. On the other hand, uh, years, decades of teaching is not unlike stand-up because it's always bombing. Anyway, carry on. Well, I mean, I was going nice to say. Nice to see you, Walter. Nice to see you. And Ann taught at Northwestern and Berkeley, right? Uh, no. Or USC. Uh, oh, UCLA and uh, so a bunch of other places. Uh, it... Uh, well, I find when you can teach and being a coach, uh, learn more. Like if I teach baseball, I, I actually learn more too. And speaking of a, a nice patriotic front, uh, John, John has a nice patriotic front. He's been told that many times, I would imagine. <laughs> I'm not yeah. sure how to, how to take that, Walter, but uh, I'll take your word for it. All right. Is there something you want to want to talk about tonight, John? Yes, well, I wanted to give an update on the uh, drama that is the um, fight over the debt ceiling. Oh, we don't want to hear about that. No, ah! we actually, we do. Well, yeah, I mean, it's very, <laughs> very interesting how one side, you know, just kind of gives up and surrenders all of its uh, weapons, and the other one just takes advantage of that and uh, rolls on over the other side. So you're so you're saying the Republicans gave up all their weapons? And oh, I'm afraid the Democrats not. rolled over them. Uh, that, that 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 rarely happens, Walter. It's unfortunately the other way around. Thanks, Obama. That's <laughs> what I got to say. All right. So okay, well let's let's start with that then. Okay. Um, if you're okay with that, Ann and uh, John. Oh, yeah. Okay, and uh, questions from the audience. You guys put your hands up. Okay. And yeah. don't interrupt John, even if he gets a little long winded. No, he <laughs> doesn't. We want to hear you. <laughs> want to hear that sultry tone? <laughs> so let, let's start with what is the debt ceiling? Uh, the debt ceiling, also called the debt limit, is a cap on the total amount of money that the federal government is authorized to borrow via U.S. Treasury securities, such as bills and savings bonds, to fulfill its financial obligations. Because the United States runs budget deficits, meaning it spends more than it brings in through taxes and other revenue, it has to borrow large amounts of money to pay its bills. <clears throat> so when it uh, borrows money, uh, the debt of the United States uh, goes up. And the, the United States, along with two other countries in the world, have a arbitrary uh, absolute cap on the amount of debt that the government uh, can uh, sustain. Um, and those countries are uh, Denmark and Kenya. Hmm. 
And Kenya is in the process of changing its law because apparently it has a better functioning government than we do. Um, and they're changing it from an, an absolute number to a percentage of GDP. So what that means is there, it, it, it rarely comes into, um, it never ends up with a fight like we're having in the United States right now because they generally set it high enough uh, so it is, isn't triggered. And Denmark, uh, their, although they have an absolute number for their um, debt ceiling limit, uh, it's so high that it never comes into play at all. It's, it's currently double what the debt of uh, Denmark uh, represents. So it's not going to be an issue for them. And there are a, a minority of countries that have this uh, type of thing, this debt ceiling, but because they set the limit so high as a percentage of GDP, it rarely becomes an issue. And if it does, they simply raise it. Uh, but what the Democrats seem to be doing is allowing the Republicans to use this as a weapon uh, against everyone in this country who isn't a multimillionaire or a billionaire and to harm the ability of the government to provide uh, services to its citizens. Um, why though? Why, why did they do that? Well, because then they can, they can uh, continue the uh, tax cuts that the Republicans seem to pass every time they get into office. Tax cuts that are that benefit the uh, the wealthy uh, disproportionately compared to anyone everyone else, and uh, you know we've seen this under Reagan, we've seen this under Bush, we've seen this under Trump, uh, and and as these tax cuts go along, they get more and more lopsided. So they tend to benefit the wealthy. Uh, almost exclusively compared to to everyone else and this adds to the deficit and the debt of the United States but it doesn't seem to bother the Republican Party when Republicans are doing it so when Democrats are in office uh, they use this thing this phony uh, debt ceiling uh, law to um, to force to extract concessions out of the Democrats. Mm -hmm. And and is it your feeling from what you were talking about, the Democrats are actually going to grant these concessions? Yeah, well, uh, Joe Biden uh, today said he's not going to invoke the 14th Amendment, which uh, many economists and uh, uh, many people on the Democratic side uh, were urging him to do. Um, which says that the the validity of the debt of the United States uh, shall not be questioned. And many see this as constitutional because it's in the Constitution that it, it makes the debt ceiling an unconstitutional. Hmm. Uh, and uh, but he came out and said, no, I'm not going to do it. So in the middle of negotiating, he takes a, a large lever off the off the field, right? Just disarms oh, himself. Does. Yeah. Yeah. So he's disarming himself in in this battle over the uh the debt ceiling. Now there was another option as well, uh, such as um uh minting a trillion dollar uh, a platinum coin uh at the uh US mint and depositing mm -hmm. that um which would allow debts to be paid and 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 would bring down the uh the debt but uh doesn't seem to be doing that either so he's negotiating with the republicans something he explicitly said he would not do yeah. you know up to a, a few weeks ago uh he he said that he would never do that well that's exactly what he's doing while he's disarming himself and not availing himself of these other options for dealing with this ridiculous situation that uh, the united states allows itself to get into does he not know there's an election coming? <laughs> I mean, yeah. and plus he's got the student debt. 
um, is still on his plate, right? He's never, he hasn't fulfilled forgiving it yet. Right. He, he announced that he was going to forgive uh, $10,000 worth of student debt uh, to certain people, depending on their income, uh, and uh, up to 20000 if they had it in, in uh, if, if they were eligible for Pell Grants, which means yeah. particularly uh, low income. Because he's uh, going to need those votes, John. And, yeah, and he is like going to need those votes. A GOP right? government right now, I bet you Trump would say, okay, you guys don't owe, owe a dime, vote for me. Right? I don't know. I mean, I mean, that. he's not using his levers like you were saying, right? And then um, Biden definitely is not. No, no. And Anna's Anna from Switzerland's got a question. Aren't the GOP planning new tax cuts for the rich right now? Well, they're always planning new tax cuts for the rich. I mean, that that is what they do as a party, because that has two benefits. It rewards the people that fund the Republican Party right. and it uh, hurts the federal government's ability to do things for people who aren't multimillionaires and billionaires. Yes. No, I agree. In Which is what they're about. They, they want to destroy the uh, standard of living for everyone in this country, except for the exceptionally wealthy. Son of a gun. And you got something to say on this too, eh? Your hands up. There. Oh, yeah. It's, uh, it's a model for chaos. That's why they do it. It's, it's liquidity for mischief. It's the sleight of hand that they pulled in the Reagan era, you know, when they changed uh, depreciation and amortization rules, it's uh, it's a game. It's kabuki. Uh, I would like to say, and you give me your sense of this, John, perhaps his additional declaration, which was sort of a response to liberal Democrats urging the use of the 14th Amendment along with Lawrence Tribe, to actually use the 14th Amendment, uh, maybe he's you already used that tool. What do you think? Maybe Biden's already used the 14th Amendment? Yeah, it's he's, he's done it as a kind of trade-off. They, they put some whatever absurd crap that they're trying to pull, some something that's part of that original bill they're trying to shove through, Maybe Biden said, well, you know, uh, if you eliminate this, I will claim publicly that I'm not going to use the 14th Amendment. Do you think it's that kind of kabuki? Oh, I see. Um, well, didn't Biden also say it's too late to use the 14th Amendment, right? Well, earlier late, I. Uh, it's true that relative to the timing of it, they should have done it a month ago. but. Mm -hmm. You know, the fact is, uh, June 1st isn't a hard deadline anyway. It can be extended after June 1st, the, the whole issue of uh, this debt ceiling. Well, the, the Treasury Secretary, uh, Janet Yellen, came out today and said that uh, we've got at least until the 5th of June now. So she put, uh, pushed it back a few days. That's right. Yeah. Um. So and it, because it depends on tax, uh, you know, taxes coming in and uh, and uh, bills being having to be paid. And, and mm -hmm. so the, the exact day that we run out of money, uh, if we observe this ridiculous uh, debt restriction is uh, d dependent on those two things, which we can't know until pretty much the day of <laughs> the uh, running out of money. So, um why is this a thing though? Like every time, every four years, three years, whatever. Oh, debt ceiling. Woo well, I think it's because the Democrats want it to be a thing. Mm. Because when yeah. they had the opportunity to get rid of it, they didn't. So this is like cover for what they want. And then they go back to their people and yeah. say, hey, we tried. Yeah. Right? They just say, oh, we, uh, we, we got to give up crash the, we couldn't social crash the security. Economy. Right, you know, yeah, we and crash the account. So, so let me tell you what 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 this is shaping sure. up to look like. This is Appreciate according it. to the New York Times latest reporting. Uh, the deal taking shape would allow Republicans to say that they were reducing some federal spending, even as spending on the military and veterans programs would continue to grow, mm. and allow Democrats to say they had spared most domestic programs from significant cuts. 
Okay. Well, there should the Democrats shouldn't have to give up anything because this is not a budget negotiation. The budget negotiation already happened. The money was already spent and allocate, allocated and spent. And this is simply a result of that process that we knew that we were going to have this debt and it was going to continue to grow because we are not taxing the wealthy enough. We keep cutting revenue sources and expecting another outcome. Uh, you know, this is the lie that the Republicans tell all the time. Oh, we cut taxes and the economy will grow so much that it, you'll bring in more revenues, even with the lower tax rates, which n never seems to happen or almost never. So is this is this something where Democrats got to ask themselves, what would Trump do? <laughs> <laughs> they should ask themselves that. But you know. uh, yeah. And, and and it's amazing, actually, when you think about it, your army, uh, navy, and air are the first, second, and fourth largest standalone armies, like each division in the world. And then when you combine it, and you go, you well, the United States has the largest military and uh, the most powerful military in the world, and uh, most expensive. Mm -hmm. And that that is never touched. That spending, the Democrats. And the Republicans agree always increase military spending, and that's what they've been doing. Well, <clears throat> yeah. Well, it's a function of you know pork barreling. It's a function of you know the procurement regime. It's 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 about still about the economy when you think about it. So I think even Bernie yeah, Sanders doesn't touch it in Vermont, right? Right. It's a lot of jobs. <laughs> well, they they <laughs> they have they, a few. Yeah. The military industrial complex, you know, and Congress put put uh, facilities in virtually every congressional district in the country mm -hmm. so that if you were to cut back on military spending, that would hurt somebody somewhere. And uh, so they say, oh, well, well, we just keep raising it. And it, the problem is that uh, spending on the military is uh, inefficient and gives you much less um, stimulus to the economy than other types of spending. Mm -hmm. um, and it, also uh, what it's doing is accumulating more and more power, uh, potential power to kill people and to destroy things. And eventually that power gets exercised, mm -hmm. particularly when you're shrinking the government and taking um, its ability to act in other ways away and while you're increasing its uh, kinetic strength or its military strength, um, it, it, it makes it more and more likely that you're going to use that military um, for that very reason. So, right. And I, and, and especially with the military in every state, like, like Ann was saying, it's almost like uh, Amazon got their playbook from the military putting warehouses in every state and stuff uh -huh. too big to fail. Right. This is what it is. Uh, Joe, Joe's hands up. Do you got a yeah. second, John, to talk to Joe? Yeah. If, if okay. I may make a naive observation from, from abroad, I am a little rusty on American politics, but it, if I'm not mistaken, it appears as if both parties are working in cahoots. Would I be wrong on that? I, I find it hard to disagree with that. I, I think they are um, uh, tag teaming us. There's a there's a a poop load of cahooting going on. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. Are those your finished dishes, Joe? Oh yes, we're all done there. Okay, can you show us uh, what you got sure. going here? That so looks I made the, this is the quinoa salad. Okay. Uh, looks it's very similar to couscous, but it's a whole grain. Right. And I've got a whole can I, yeah, I got a whole lot of vegetable, crunchy vegetables in there with a Dijon vinaigrette. And we've got pumpkin seeds, pomegranate seeds, the butt squash, the chahote, cucumber, uh, some green paprika or banana pepper, and uh, dill and parsley. Then I've made the Thai sauce. Oh, yeah. 
with uh, the, you ruined it with, uh, there's a leaf on top of it i think you ruined i thought it. you might appreciate that yeah. you know, nothing leaves a kitchen without a garnish yeah speaking speaking of garnish we've got the uh fresh melon that was sliced up and sprinkled with salt and sumac ground that sumac. looks appetizing i'll tell you that and it's very refreshing mm -hmm. so you you add a little salt and a little sumac and it just brings out the the, the melon flavor quite nicely if do you, you have ever... a bland melon if you have an unripe melon it does wonders okay do you ever pickle melon at all or is that a thing um i have we, we do grow... day pickles and stuff but okay now yeah, i've had pickled watermelon before uh, joe do you uh, in order to determine whether the uh, melon is uh, ripe and do you, you uh, squeeze it well, if you press the if you press the the end where it connects to the the plant, it, mm -hmm. it should give, and you can also smell it. That's it some has ASMR a musky, right there. Musky smell. <laughs> musky smell. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Go. All right. If one well, needs good... to uh, squeeze two melons, is that best done in quiet? <laughs> <laughs> Joe, thank you so much for cooking that dish. And uh, his ingredients will be on the Discord, and the link to our Discord will be in the in the description. So I can't stress thank enough. You. Get the newsletter. Makes thank us you, Joe. All hungry. Yeah, I'm, I'm starting to get there too. Um, so I just which, I just uh, wanted to let you know, Walter, just what what the what the deal they're working on is here. Okay, yes, please. And, a little, and I had a little a, actually more. a question too after that. So yeah, you go. a little more detail on that. Oh, okay. Uh, so this deal would seem to impose caps on discretionary spending for two years, hmm. though those caps would apply differently to spending on the military than to non-defense discretionary spending. Spending on the military would grow next year, as would spending on some veterans care that falls under non-defense discretionary spending. The rest of non-defense discretionary spending would fall slightly or roughly stay flat compared with this year's levels. So what the New York Times is not saying there is that uh, if you cut that amount, mm -hmm. then uh, you're not uh, keeping pace. You, you have to increase that amount to have the same effect, to, to provide the same amount of services uh, because of inflation, right? rising yes. expenses. So in order to maintain the same level of expenses, you actually have to increase it at least as much as inflation is rising. Mm -hmm. uh, so what they're going to do here is either not increase it at all or reduce it. So you're going to have to make cuts in the, uh, the, the services you're providing, such as education, uh, healthcare spending, uh, or uh, environmental protection. So okay, more just, people will get sick. You'll have less ability to treat them. And um, this is all being done for what now? All a bad move, in my opinion. The, well, deal, the deal would also roll back $10 billion of the $80 billion that Congress approved last year for an IRS crackdown on high earners and corporations that evade taxes. So that provision is still under discussion. Democrats have championed the initiative and nonpartisan scorekeepers have said that the funding for the IRS would reduce the budget deficit, which is purportedly what the Republicans are after here. Of course, it's not really what they're after. Um, by helping the government collect more of the tax revenue, it is owed. But Republicans have denounced it claiming falsely that the money would be used to fund an army of auditors to go after working people. Uh, They're good with the spin, aren't they? The they are good with the spin, but it's total nonsense. I mean, if you want to reduce the budget deficit, then the IRS has to be able to do its job. And the Republicans have been starving the IRS of resources. Um, so they can't do their job, particularly the harder job of going after wealthy people and corporations, because those are the people that can fight back. They can hire mm -hmm. tax attorneys. That's right. They can well, bring their money from offshore to fund their paying the lawyers. Right. So 
Right. Uh, but, you know, so Republicans lie and say, oh, it's going after working and middle class. No, it is not. This it is specifically to go after high earners and corporations, which are the paymasters of the Republicans. And quite frankly, you know, uh, about half of the, the Democrats as well. Um, so here, Biden actually passed something that was really good. Um, that would increase our revenues by making sure that uh, tax evaders are, are stopped. Um, but what he's doing here is giving back, it appears, giving back an, an eighth of that funding, yeah. which will decrease revenues that the IRS is owed. So, you know, it's, uh, it's amazing. You know. It is amazing too. And, and I was going to ask you a question about inflation. So um, up here, part of the problem with inflation has been grocery prices. And I think uh, a dozen, dozen eggs for non-vegetarians is pretty high in the States too, from what I've been reading. Uh, so we had one of our, our food suppliers, giants, um, complaining that it was the um, suppliers were charging them more. That's why they had to charge more in the grocery store, but then it just, so that's low blah, 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 And then it just happens that Loblaws owns uh, an 80% or 70% stake in the suppliers. So they're double dipping, right? But blaming the suppliers, yet they own the supplier. <laughs> um, you know, so I don't think it's wages driving inflation at all. I think it's artificial. And, that's my feeling anyways. Can you guys talk a little bit about that? Do you think it is? Oh, I, I think it's, well, that's why, you know, the, the Federal Reserve raising interest rates is not, mm. uh, it's, not going, helpful. It, it's not going to get rid of inflation uh, because inflation is being caused by other things that the Federal Reserve cannot deal with. And you just identified one of them. And that is that uh, corporations are, uh, eliminating competition. Mm -hmm. And I think it's called uh, vertical integration, which is what you're talking about. They own the suppliers. Yes. And they are the distributors yeah. of, uh, of the produce and, and, and other food goods. So uh, that has gives them pricing power. And they use the excuse of, oh, look, inflation's going up to, to raise their prices and thus mm -hmm. contribute to that inflation and, and, you know, cause it to rise even more. Well, this uh, is happening all across the Western economies, right? Even in Europe. Yes, well, because we've been pursuing neoliberalism, uh, and which allows these companies to do that. Go ahead. Uh, oh, no, I just wanted to chime in and say that, you know, we're at this moment of weak antitrust uh, enforcement and raising questions about vertical integration, which in some yeah. cases is also called monopsony, is a, is a real problem in enforcing regulation and is very symptomatic of the neoliberal economy. It is, you know, how it's been sort of uh, bargained down for years about predatory pricing. All, we're still at this moment where we have these kinds of problems. Uh, because some people, including Democrats, felt that, uh, you know, some people shouldn't be regulated in that manner. Well, that's a good point. Um, I think maybe we better ask Anne, Anne since she's in her balaclava and uh, she's <laughs> uncomfortable. <laughs> was there, was there something you wanted to talk about? Um, oh, I I'm sorry. No, it's a fascination fascinating uh discussion john and we could go on for hours and i hope we can pick it up next week as well sure 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 okay absolutely i may even have something to yammer about that well okay. <laughs> i've been looking at and i don't know if we can get a, a a visual of it but the idea is that uh there's this guy he's uh just an ordinary citizen a photographer joe flood who just came up and, and did a thing that went viral. He just heckled the right-wing group called Patriot Front. And a lot of people don't know what Patriot Front is, but they show up constantly, and they're kind of creating a national myth of national conservatism. These are ideas are important ideas, and folks should, should get into this problem. 
because they appear to be pervasive, you know, ubiquitous, when in fact, you know, they're just a, a very small group of white guys who have decided they would do little pieces of performance art, very similar to what went on on January 6th. But of course, we know that none of them charged the Capitol. No, they're, they're doing the long game, not unlike the SA in Germany in the interwar period. So let me briefly read to you something sure. from their website about what makes an American. The American identity was something uniquely forged in the struggle that our ancestors waged to survive in this new continent. This is the response to uh, 16, 1619. America is truly unique in this pan-European identity, which forms the roots of our nationhood. To be an American is to realize this identity and take up the national struggle upon one's shoulders, not simply by birth is one granted this title, but by the degree to which he works and fulfills the potential of his birth. No man is complete simply to live, but to do more than that, to strive to create a path onward for his people and to connect with the heritage he is undeniably a part of. This is what completes a man. Only then is he truly deserving of the title and a place among his people. So it's about manhood. And, you know, uh, I, I put it up on, uh, you can see this on Daily Coast, I included the uh, the screenshots of uh, of the booking the booking photos for the the thirty one or thirty some odd guys who got arrested uh, in a anti LG, uh, LGBT uh, uh, demonstration in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. And funny thing, yeah, these are all guys; they're all white. Uh, something's amiss here. But let me give you a little background about why this is among so many other things that the uh, uh, that that the that the can I can I just point out you you said that with so much emotion. Are you the leader of the Patriot? Ah! (laughs) No, 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 no. I'm resisting this. And besides, uh, 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 women of color are not kind of the folks they're really appealing to, although they have very <laughs> nice taste in clothes. And on the, on that note, you know, the guy who's in charge of this is a guy named Tom Russo, uh, who was a teenager when he founded the group in uh, 2017. He took control of those uh, Charlottesville guys who showed up, you know, of uh, Unite the Right. Oh, uh, one, of those, one of those groups is called Vanguard America, and uh, he kind of seized control of this and uh, decided that what, not unlike some of the other groups that were there in Charlottesville, that they needed a kind of corporate identity. So the corporate identity of Patriot Front is uh, uh, baseball caps, kind of golf caps, actually. Polo shirts like the Proud Boys, not Proud Boy polo shirts, but rather polo shirts like the Proud Boys. And khaki pants. What's with the khaki pants? What, dude? I have no idea. You know, <laughs> it, uh, uh, you know. My brother owns a pair and I gave him a heck. So. Hey, <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you know, when I was in high school, that was the basic uniform for Catholic school boys, but that's a whole nother story. But it's uh, all about trad life. Yes, yes. So, uh, anyway. Uh, Tom Rousseau eventually left Vanguard, but he decided to form Patriot Front. And like Hugo Boss, who made uniforms for the Nazis, uh, he's into a kind of corporate identity. So they show up at these things and they make they carry flags and they uh, they don't have a uh, Nazi salute yet, but I suppose they're working on it. So anyway, this guy and I don't know if you can see uh Joe Flood is just a guy. He's a photographer. He's a leftist. Uh, he even has the cape. Uh, he, he got a rental bicycle and then uh, uh, sort of insulted them. And so I'm going to read off a couple of uh, things from his uh, story in The Independent. 
uh, and sure. uh, and then we can uh, move on to other things. I'm the lone cyclist who faced down a white supremacist march. Here's how to do it. I was in a coffee shop, shop idly checking Twitter when I saw something shocking. The Patriot Front was marching on the National Mall in Washington, D.C., home to my country's most sacred monuments and memorials and the city that I call home. The Patriot Front has done this before, slipping into D.C. without notice except to the police to march around and leave before counter-protesters -pro could gather. Now, that, that's an important point. Is they, do, they do their little march before the actual demonstration. They get delivered to the site in a rented U-Haul truck and then they run away after uh, actual counter protest or uh, actual counter protesters can can arrive. Okay. To my surprise, I found the white nationalists immediately. Upon reaching the mall, I noticed cop cars on the grass by the Washington Monument. That had to be them. Pedaling up the hill, I saw a nightmarish tableau: a long line of masked men carrying upside down flags, standing at attention while their dapper leader delivered a speech. Behind him, a banner that read, Reclaim America. Now, the problem with reclaiming America is you always have to have your, you know, uh, receipt. But anyway, rolling down the parade line of white nationalists, I hurled insults. Losers! No one likes you. Your mom hates you. So, you know, not using swear words is kind of a good thing. I didn't use profanity because I thought that would be easy for them to ignore. Instead, I got personal, going after the way they dressed, looked, and acted. You're all wearing different kinds of pants. You're sloppy. Cargo pants are out. They did not look like an intimidating martial force, but instead a bunch of young men in mismatched outfits playing dress-up. You're cosplayers. You're incels. I was not afraid of them because they seemed like a joke. And there were police officers all around, many of whom were laughing at my roasts. The leader of the group gave an incredibly boring speech that he hadn't memorized. He'd say something about white supremacy, and then this white man would have to stop and pull out his notes. Why can't you memorize your speech, I shouted. And he droned on, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so one of his insults, and he decided, this is kind of a useful insult, and I think in general, this is going to come uh, proceed in the future. You look like General Custer's illegitimate son. So uh, General Custard's illegitimate son? Yep. That got to him. I watched as he sighed and looked down for a moment, utterly defeated, his last stand occurring in the shadow of the Washington Monument. It's a strange thing to go viral. That evening, the video of me heckling the Patriot Front blew up on TikTok. By the time I saw it, the views were over 100,000 and the comments were too many to read. Mm. And so anyway, he says, I don't think I'm a hero. There are plenty of other Americans who do braver things in much tougher places each day. So doing this kind of gig is part of what, what little bravery I have. I'm workshopping an idea, noting that there are many professors who have become part of uh, movements. Uh, for example, uh, Comrade Gonzalo, alias Chairman Gonzalo, fourth sort of Marxist-Leninism, Maoism, and Subcommandante Marcos identified as a uh, as El Sud since 2006, Delegate Zero, who is also a professor, is leader of the Zapatista National Liberation Army, also called the Zapatistas, which launched a rebellion in 1994 in the state of Chiapas. So that's me. I haven't worked out a name yet. We're still workshopping this. I am proud to be a proud boog, not boogaloo, but maybe booger, because that's kind of what you get when you wear these balaclavas. All the snot builds up behind your mask. <laughs> <laughs> Makes you emotional too. Um, is this Joe Flood? Uh, can you see that? Yes, that's Joe Flood. That's Joe Flood with the cape. Yep. And he's wearing uh, knee highs. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's, that's pretty cool. Just a guy. Just a guy. Just a guy. Just the best of guy. Whoa. 
well, I think if if we all did that, you know, we just sort of went around and sort of heckled them by saying, you know, your mother dresses you funny, you know, it might have an effect. No, that's a, that's a good point. Thanks for bringing that up, Anne. I had no idea. Joe Flood, um, that remind, I thought that was Brad Pitt's character in a movie, Joe Flood. No, that was Joe Mudd. Ah. Sorry, my bad, but uh, okay. Uh Thank you so much, um, John. You got any 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 last words before we go? We'll we'll let Anne have the have the last words for tonight before we uh, shut things down. But uh, you've eaten you from Joe's fed you. Uh, you've had some comedy from Jim and Martha, so you must be well satisfied. Yeah, yeah. No, I, don't, I think it's uh, going quite uh, swimmingly. Uh, I would. Uh, I just want to uh, ask people to uh, call their representatives and tell them not to uh, agree to a, any deal with the Republicans that cuts social spending. Tell them to take it out of the military. Tell them to not do it at all. Tell them that this uh, debt ceiling thing is ridiculous and. Uh, they're going to vote them all out if uh, they don't change it. That's a great public service announcement, John. That's just, um, do you do the tweet or anything or social media? Or I, what's I, the don't best do way? The, I don't do social media, but uh, I would like to encourage everyone to join the autonomous collective. And they can do that by uh, going to discord and looking up the autonomous collective and getting on our mailing list. We have a, uh, a newsletter that goes out uh, weekly and uh, you can take a look at our schedule and sign up for to do a presentation even if they'd like. But get involved, it's a great community. Um, so please do that. What's tonight's uh, the web address? Right? The web address for that is theautonomouscollective.net. Well, thanks, Joe. What's the Twilight Zone episode today, John? Um, uh, today? It's a very tonight. good tonight. Yeah, a very good one. Uh, it uh, involves uh, two parents that can't find their little girl. Uh, they can hear her, but they cannot see her. Uh, she seems to have just vanished from her bedroom, and they are growing very frantic. And they try to they they do in fact uh, enlist their neighbor, who's a physicist, to. Uh, Try to help them find her. Sounds fascinating, John. It and is. then it's a good you're, one. You're going to show it, and then we're going to have a discussion about it, right? Yes. And at the beginning, I'm going to uh, introduce it, tell you a little bit about the Twilight Zone, which is a classic uh, television show. If you haven't seen it, you should, and uh, give you a little bit of information about the uh, the actors that uh, are in this episode. Thank you so much, John. And Anne, what do you want to leave the audience with uh, tonight? And do you have any social media or is it daily costs? Uh, let's just leave it at daily costs. Uh, I, I blog there every night because I do a report on Ukraine. I just sort of assemble other uh, reportage about what the daily events have been. Uh, it, I'm at daily costs under the handle Annie Lee, A-N-N-I-E-L-I. So uh, uh, come and see me there. I posted so the text of what I was yammering about uh, there at when we started. So uh, if I read it, it'll be in your voice. I hope so. so. Uh, I hope so. The problem is that this character, and I guess it'll be a character at some moment, this damn balaclava makes you sweat a lot. Anyway, yeah, you look very uncomfortable in that thing. I got to say, and well, you. you know, I I put on my my tactical jacket and my uh, Hawaiian shirt, trying <laughs> to fit into this thing. <laughs> Unfortunately, I have a uh, a Biden uh, baseball cap. It's a uh, number forty six, but the problem is, it says no forty six. So it's kind of, you know, uh, anti-Biden thing. So whatever. Mm. Well, well, thank you guys so much. Thank you, Anne. And I look Thanks. forward to, to, to next week, whoever the host is. Uh, ah! <laughs> <laughs> ah! All right, well, I so. hope it's you, Walter. You're, you're uh, well, quite adept thanks. at it. All right, aren't I a little, I'm a little bit uh, too casual tonight and no, whoops, no energy. Well, we're gonna we're gonna work on the rough edges. We're gonna we're gonna workshop it. 
Yes, we are. are. Okay, sounds You're good. You're not Thanks. answering my raised hand. I know that for sure. Thanks, John. And thank you, Anne. And I will be actually... Oh, did you have a question for the professors? Uh, I'm, I'm slightly concerned with the, uh, the person with the very strange look. Uh, she, she mentioned um, the, the connection between khaki pants and the far right. And I was wondering... I packed my pants a lot due to liberation. <laughs> and uh, so do I need to change my fashion choices? <laughs> Gotta keep that hat. Keep the hat, okay. But uh, I, I, I was trying to stop packing my pants. Thank you. Thank you, King Chuck. Appreciate it. Um all right, this has been the this is the end for the autonomous collection. For for those of who joined us last Friday, uh, we had an interview with Cameron and Charity uh, West, who were walking across Canada in support of uh, media attention for Indigenous men who have been missing. Apparently, there's a lot more men have went missing than women and children, and they're walking for those two as well. They're currently in Manitoba. They left Alberta, went through Saskatchewan. They're in Manitoba, and they have a CBC interview coming up for for your states on the borders that get the CBC. It'll be quite interesting. Uh, Charlie, do you want to send us out at all? King Chuck? It was once said by a great man that... um, um, <laughs> oh, no. and well yes so there there you have it <laughs> well you, king said Chuck. king charles yeah. you thank are you, a you. leader for the ages thank That's you true. very much now i'm going to re remind everybody go go to the link in the description for the newsletter get on board um uh we could use some production help for one uh, <laughs> <laughs> thanks a lot take care